Yo, 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 what is going on, COD Familia? It is your boy BN, aka Mr. Kingdom Builder, and today I got another update for you. Probably gonna be a quickie here for SS1, which, again, for those who may not be familiar, I know we've been getting some new subs in the channel lately, so SS1 is the first merged kingdom server. So this is four kingdoms, kingdoms one, two, three, and four that were merged together, and now we have SS1. That basically is what happens when you go into the next season after the first. Here in SS1 today, we're going to give you just a quick state of affairs. Like I said, I don't think this is going to take too long. Before we dive into everything and show you a little bit more as far as what is to come as well for what may happen. As always, excuse me. If you enjoy the content, make sure you sub, like, ring the notification bell. And if you want to join and be a part of our conversation, hit up the Discord. You can find a link to that in the pinned comment description right down below. And remember, we got new videos coming out every day at 14 UTC, in-game time, and then outside of that, 9 a.m. Eastern. Okay. So lay of the land right now, let me just remove some of the fluff here. We have, at the moment, <clears throat> a little bit progressed here from this southern pass, right, between Forgotten Lands and Zoland. Outside of that, here on the eastern pass, where we had GRZ, TA, and I think it was TR, are still here in this kind of a stalemate situation where you have UNT, POS, and GOK, right? N no one's really broken through there at all oh and i want to make a quick correction because one of the videos i did before I, I apparently i had the biggest brain fart and i had talked about how you know why don't they just rally the players here on territory and what's funny is i did a specific video covering the recent change from the latest update where you can now no longer do that when they're on territory right so you can't swarm the city you can't um, as far as far as like solo hit, you can't rally a city until they're off territory, right? Which in short just basically means you just need to remove the flag, right? And then as long as their city's there, right, on neutral or non-alliance territory, then you can go ahead and do that. But with this in mind, <clears throat> right, uh, it doesn't mean that everything uh, there. One of the things that I touched on is that you can still go deep, right, into territory, even if you're just kind of doing it the open field way and just waiting for them to come out. And, you know, you could still go ahead and attack keeps, deconstruct, if there's any barricades that are there. Those are things you can still take advantage of. In this situation, though, right, you still from down here, right, you got four BDN, uh, four, uh, four we got four BN1, even NT45 ended up throwing a fort over here on this side. And really, for the most part, you can see here that 4BDN is still pushing east, right? It looks like 4BD1 is now going down to try and uh, peak at APK. However, they haven't uh, they haven't continued building anything at this point. I think there's some, some units here. I don't know whose these are. We'll see. Okay, yeah, so just 4BD1. But as far as this goes, right, no one's attacking this one. Uh, no one's attacking the flag, so I don't know if the plan is, hey, we're going to go ahead and get, we're just going to do the bear, and then, hey, we'll just connect here and then be able to go for the CF, or if they're going to try to remove this flag, maybe this flag, and then build their own flag to connect, because they're just basically one flag away from touching. Then, if we look at the east here for 4BDN, right, you can see them pushing east over here to the POS, which I think this is their second. Oh, it actually is their core. That means that, yeah, so it's just an AF up there, which is just a standard alliance fort. But if they're able to make their way up east, and again, depending on if they're going to go for this, I would imagine they would. It doesn't really make any sense for them, you know, not necessarily to. However, in this moment, right, no one's really pushing the flag, right? So there's really no troops that are here. So I'm not sure if the plan is, hey, we're just going to chill and wait a little bit. And, right, maybe they're not pushing anymore. Uh, even when we look at the eastern pass over here going into zone land from Forgotten Lands, you're not really seeing anyone really pushing, right? I mean, sure, there's there's some units here, I think, probably just for standing army and visibility sake, right? But nothing really there, right? Even the keeps, when you look at this from UNT, right? They, this was usually 30 to 40 on a regular basis. Now they're just chilling. Ripper, I really, shout out to Ripper, dude, for just holding it down there on the other side of the bridge. Uh, and then we have 17 in here for the POS keep, right? Some here for the other keeps that are spread out. Um, I think there was a few more here. I thought we saw deeper. Maybe I'm cray cray. And it was just the one... Yeah, probably. Unless they put another one over here. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. Okay. Oh, there we go. Ten and four, right? So 
some there. Uh, but outside of that, right, again, really has chilled down for the most part here in SS1, uh, which, again, I think part of it could be just because of the holidays, right? It's the 24th, so, you know, while I'm recording this Christmas Eve right now, uh, my fam the family usually does something around midnight, so for me, there's not really anything to, to do. Oh, dude, I love, I love the YOLO charge, though, here from uh, the range cab. You can see that with the arrows uh, going at it. However, uh, I think that leads me into a little bit of why we're seeing, you know, some delay. Also, to point out that it will, I will be curious to see how the level two passes operate because this is something that is going to be coming up pretty soon. If you look at, we're on moment of truth, so you've got 12 hours until this finishes, at least as of recording this video. So by the time this video comes out, right, moment of truth may be close to finishing if not already finished and then conspiracy usually runs about three days here to capture a hydra layer and then 12 hours after so from from right now you're essentially looking at almost exactly four days at least as of recording the video which means that if in game right now is the 25th that you can see up here we're looking at the 29th right for around about give or take the same time for when the uh, for when level two passes will open now, in this situation, what's interesting is that, and this is kind of where we talk a little bit, I don't know if I want to say drama, but just a little bit of like what is actually going to happen here. Because you have to think about it like this. For all intents and purposes, right, the South getting pushed to Zoland probably is not going to grab one of these two. Which means that in POS's case, right, there's three level two passes here, right? APK is connected to one. You have POS that's connected to one, and they really have their other chance. If you think about it, right, you could have all of the players here, right, in UNT, POS, GOK, um, APK, YFT, right, they could just kind of union with each other, and then you just have one of each go ahead and take a level two pass, and then they can kind of continue the fight in Atherin. That's one option that they could do. Otherwise, if they're just going to keep fighting here. Now, this is the other thing, right? So there, there's kind of a few ways to play this. This is why I don't think that the Southern forces are really out of it just yet. Because as long as they stay together <clears throat> and they keep fighting, that can, that can also play somewhat of a disruptor role into the Northern forces trying to then expand out into Zone 2. Remember... If you're going to try it and go and schedule to capture uh, passes, you're going to flag out. You're going to go start working on other, like, again, right, on the Necro Giant, um, right? If you're going to attempt maybe Magma Daemon at some point, those are things that you have to dedicate players and resources to. So what this will eventually create is kind of a fighting on two front situation, right? Unless you know, one or two of the Northern Force alliances are just going to hang back and keep fighting the Southern Forces while the other ones go out and build. I don't think that makes a lot of sense. So, you know, when the pass is open here in a couple days, you could make the argument, okay, well, why don't the Southern Forces just, you know, keep up their bare minimum, focus on gathering, focus on recovering for these next couple days, and then go ahead and, and prepare, right, for when? Oh, did they just take the pass again? Level one. Oh, they did. Oh, cool. We could see it. Yeah, they just retook the pass. But this is something that you could say is a viable strategy for the South, right? If they just want to hang back, recover, uh, and then once the pass is open, right, start putting that pressure once they start, once the other Northern forces start capturing their passes, maybe even prep here in Burning Land so they can try and get into Atherin. Um, right in the event that kind of going through one of these level two passes may not be the most ideal, right? That's something to consider. Uh, because you also have to look at the other regions, right? Darlin doesn't really have access to a level two pass, so they're kind of in this situation where nothing's really going to happen. No one at this point in Forgotten Lands has flagged out to, right? I mean, you have nt45 that is kind of that is it looks like flagged out already to this um, and actually it looks like they might have flagged out to this northern pass so they're kind of already setting up here right so i wonder if that's something that they're already going to be allowed to get no one's flagged out to this level two pass yet 
Uh, this one, no one is flagged out to. Of course, Forbidden is or Forbidden is closest to those two passes. But outside of that, right, maybe TR is going to go for this one. Forbidden will go for that one. So that's an option when you when you look at it like that. But again, because Darlin doesn't have any access, you can see here, there's no level two passes. So you have to be in Nivola if you want to be able to get access to at least two. Uh, at the moment, we got 4BD1 has access, and then no one else is over here, so they might be just kind of in free reign to get two of these. If we keep working our way over here, you could see Nivola actually, with just kind of where their positioning is, they can go into Lorcan, and they could also go into Hollandale, right? Just from essentially where their access is. Um, at the moment, for BDN pretty much has access everywhere. I don't know. Uh, maybe this is GRZ. Yeah, so GRZ has one, but then over here, no one's connected on this one yet. It looks like for BD1. So yeah, they're, they're kind of what three. And then if I go over here into Safrostia, no one's no one has gone here yet, right? So that could be ROG. Let's see who Orange is or for BDN. They could go there. They, it looks like they're already set up for this level two pass. Maybe they're probably going to work over to this one. I don't think BK or TBC is going to get this, so it's probably just a matter of them flagging out here. Uh, either going around, right, the ridge, or which probably is what they'll have to do, something like that. Um, and then if you go all the way over here to Kaltia, that's the other one, right? So you've got two passes here. One is pretty much already built, so TA is probably going to get this one. Maybe yeah, TA is probably going to grab these two, unless there's something that really changes from that. Uh, but again, right, th that's where you have to now think about is, is how is this going to develop? Um, and, you know, what, what will the South do? Will we see any alliance changes? Will, you know, will the North, uh, you know, split some of their alliances up? Will they, you know, will one go over to the South? Uh, are they just going to stay intact and then just nothing is going to happen in Zone 2, right? It's kind of just already decided and that's going to be it, no more fighting. Those questions will be interesting to find and figure out once we get in, once we get closer to the level 2 passes opening up. And then I'm sure once the level 2 passes opening up, because like I said, I, I still think the South has opportunity, right? If it's hard to fight on two fronts. Um, especially if you're looking to build out on one front, but then you still have to defend from the other front. So I think that's really where the disruption opportunity comes in for the South, and then just depending on how things keep up, right? Uh, you know, keeping that perseverance and that resilience up for them to whether, like I said, they take this time to recover or they just keep going at it nonstop. That you know, that is something that I think will play a factor into, right? How uh, you know, what type of wrench, right? How how big will the wrench be that they could throw into the cog? Or maybe the tide might even turn from just being able to hit any of the alliances that are trying to expand into Zone 2 from one side while they're trying to build on the other side, right? That can be somewhat annoying, especially if you're trying to develop into a Zone 2 region that is just kind of right for the picking, but you're having to sit there and constantly attack uh, or defend, right, you should say, uh, in that regard. And if you spend too much time attacking, then this is less time you have on developing. So there are still a lot of questions that we have for how SS1 is going to play out. I, th I still think that it's exciting because there is just a, a quite a few directions that this could go. And without knowing more information yet, that to me is something that I think poses a few of the scenarios mentioned for what we have to maybe look forward to and just want to look out four with that in mind that is it for me like i said this isn't going to be super long because there's just no really fights going on so whether we give you daily or every other day updates again i'll still be here to bring you all the action all the updates uh, i might even try and you know maybe post a little bit more of a drama video on some things that have happened um, just from things that have been posted by others and you know just kind of talk out some of the scenarios might be interesting uh, but that is it really for me again i hope you guys enjoy this video and the content as usual as we're always trying to bring you as much as we can from the world of cod right not necessarily just kind of focusing on one kingdom or whether it be the one i play in or you know any type of <clears throat> uh, singular merged kingdoms we're really trying to show you as much as we can off from the community and all encompassing within the game however though finally that is it for me uh so until next time i will catch y'all later